Greetings, Des King at kskdesign.com.au and today we start making our shorji. The processes I go through in this video will lay the foundations for making much more complex shorji and crafting the array of kumiko patterns I'll cover in coming weeks and months. So if you can understand the concepts and the workflow behind making this simple shorji, it's not that much of a leap to making this kind of shorji or this kind of kumiko artwork. But first a gratuitous advertising plug. This video is meant to be a supplement to the instructions in book one, The Basics. It's not meant to be a replacement for the book. The book goes into quite some detail on how to calculate shoji dimensions, all the jigs that are needed, and variations on shoji frames. So to get the full benefit from this video, you really will need to buy the book. It's available from Amazon and it isn't expensive considering what's included. So this is the shorji we'll be making. As I mentioned in the introductory video, it's a scaled down version of the first shorji in book one, The Basics. All the joinery though is full size. You can see that it has three vertical and five horizontal kumiko and all kumiko are evenly spaced. It also has an internal frame and this is called its gecko. You'll also notice that the styles form horns on the top and the bottom. The top horn is 10 millimeters and the bottom horn is 5 millimeters. These horns are important for adjusting the shoji to fit in their grooves and to fit flush up against the walls. I won't be going through this fitting process in this video, but it's described in detail in the book. Another thing you should note is that the vertical kumiko sit on top of the horizontal kumiko. There is no weaving pattern. In centuries past, when the shoji makers or tatiguya used to mush up their rice to make glue, this was probably necessary for strength. But with the modern glues of today, this kumiko weaving isn't necessary. If you like, you can use this style as a design feature, but other than that, there really is no need. The timber we need for this shoji is two styles, 30.5 millimeters by 30.5 millimeters and 850 millimeters long. The final length of the styles will be 750 millimeters, but allow an extra 50 millimeters on both ends. We need two rails, 45 millimeters by 29 millimeters and 350 millimeters long. Three tsukeko, with a mitsuke of 6.5 millimetres, mikomi of 16 millimetres and 700 millimetres long. One of these will be cut in half for the two horizontal tsukeko. We need at least three vertical kumiko with a mitsuke of 4 millimetres, mikomi of 15 millimetres and about 700 millimetres long. We also need at least five horizontal kumiko with a mitsuke of 4 millimetres Mikomi of 14 millimetres and about 330 millimetres long. All these timber dimensions are shown down in the information section below. That's all the timber we need, but it's probably wise to make up a few extra kumiko in particular in case of a disaster. If you like, you can use story sticks for horizontal and vertical marking, but for a simple shoji of this size, it's probably just as easy to work straight from one of the rails and one of the styles and mark everything from them. Have a look at the timber and see which side gives you the best face so you can then work out which side will be the front and which will be the back. I just use a triangle to indicate the orientation of the, uh, the framing pieces. And the same with the rails. I'll start off with the style. This is our front face. So all marks are made on the inside face. There's our front. All marks are made on the inside face towards the rear. Avoid marking towards the front, otherwise those marks will show when the shoji is put together. Now before I continue, all marking I do is with the styles is from the bottom up. With the rails, it's always from the left. So make sure you've got a sharp marking knife. So with the style, start off by marking the bottom of the horn. Remember, make sure you mark on the inside face. From the horn mark, mark up five millimeters. That line is where the bottom of the bottom rail will sit. Next, take the bottom rail 
And in the same way that we did when we were uh, practicing cutting the kumiko, place a rail up against the square, move it across so you no longer see the mark that we just made. And that then becomes the top of the bottom rail. That is also the length of our, uh, our mortises in the style. Next, grab one of your skeko and do exactly the same thing with that mark that we just made. Again, don't extend that mark all the way across. Keep it towards the back. That's our skeko mark. Next, mark up 102 millimetres from the skeko mark we just made. And place a mark there towards the rear. That mark is the bottom kumiko, and the kumiko will sit above that mark. So from that mark, then mark up 106 millimetres, and mark that towards the rear. That's the second kumiko. So from there, up another 106 millimetres, and mark towards the rear. And once you've marked, don't forget to, uh, to indicate with a pencil the side that the kumiko sits on. The final kumiko will be another 106 millimetres. Place a mark there and a pencil line to indicate which side the kumiko sits. Next we go another 106 millimetres. That mark is now the bottom of the skeko. So again, take the skeko, move it across until that mark is no longer visible, then place a mark. That's the top of the skeko. Similarly, with your top rail, move it across so the top of the skeko is no longer visible. That's the top of the top rail. Now remember from the top, we have a 10 millimeter horn. So mark up 10 millimeters. And that's the horn. And that's waste. Okay, we've got this marked up. This style now becomes our story stick. From this, we take the markings for the other style and also for the vertical uh, skeko and vertical kumiko. But before we go uh, marking the other style, we'll just put in the mortise mark. The mortise is 22 millimeters and that will give a haunch of 23 millimeters. So just place a mark for the mortise. That'll be a double mortise, so just put a mark where the mortise goes. On the other side, mark up 22 millimetres for the mortise. Place a mark and indicate where the mortise goes. So what we'll do now is mark the other style from the style we just made up. Okay, first make sure orientation is correct. Now flip them over so that the inner side for both is now facing up and clamp them together. Now make sure that they stay firmly clamped until all the marking is finished. Once they're clamped it's just simply a matter of extending the marks from the, the style that we marked up into the, uh, into the new style. And don't forget to mark which side the kumiko sits and continue that for all of the other marks. Now it's time to move on to the uh, the vertical kumiko and the vertical skeko. With the skeko exactly the same as uh, we did with the styles, I place a triangle. And now I know the correct orientation for the skeko and it sits like that. Now we need to mark the orientation of the kumiko. Now we don't use a triangle for that. All we do is just simply place a single mark towards the bottom. So making sure that Skeko is properly aligned, clamp the inside Mikomi to the inside face of the style. Once the two pieces are clamped, mark across the Skeko. Here we only need to worry about the 
inside Skekel mark and also each of the Kumiko marks. And don't forget to mark which side the Kumiko will sit. Next we do exactly the same thing with the Kumiko. Make sure the uh, correct alignment and firmly clamp them both together. So place a mark with the inside Skekel mark. That's your shoulder. And again do the same now for all of the uh, Kumiko marks. Be careful of the, uh, the tenon shoulder mark. Make sure that's accurate. And don't forget to mark all the joints. So we've done the two styles. We've done one of the uh, skeko and also we've done one of the kumiko. It's now time to mark the other skeko. Once they're clamped together, it's just simply a matter of extending the line across from the skeko that you've already marked to the unmarked skeko. So at this stage we've got both of our styles marked, we've got the two vertical uh, skekel mark and one of our vertical kumiko mark. At this stage we don't need to mark any of the other vertical kumiko. With the styles we've marked the, the sides of the mortises for the rails and also for each of the, uh, the horizontal kumiko. What we now have to do is mark the back edges of the mortises for the uh, kumiko. These marks for the styles are going to be different from the marks for the rails and are also going to be different for the mark for the skeko. The back edge of the mortise for the kumiko in the style is 7.3 millimeters. So with the marking gauge set at 7.3 millimeters, mark on the kumiko side of each of those uh, those mortise marks we made before. Make sure the marks are on the chemical side. Once you've done that, set the uh, marking gauge to 13.7 millimeters and mark the inside edge of the, the mortises. The reason being is that the mortises are 6.4 millimeters. The inside edge of the mortise is marked 13.7 millimeters from the back of the, uh, of the style. The last thing to do is to, uh, to mark the mortises for the rails. Uh, the mortises are marked exactly the same way that they were marked in the, uh, the video we did on the, uh, the exercises. The only difference is that don't forget we've got the, uh, the haunch as well. Okay, so once uh, we've done that, just do a final check. Make sure the, uh, the top and bottom are aligned properly. Flip them over and just generally line up all of the marks. They should all be perfectly aligned. If they are, then simply a matter of cutting off the, the waist. So we'll just cut down to the horn mark. Make sure you cut to the horn mark. Don't cut to the rail mark. So once you've cut them, there should be a 5mm horn on the bottom and 10mm horn on the top. What we do now is just simply chamfer around the ends of the horns on the top and the bottom. Uh, for chamfering I just use my uh, Kiwagunna. Um, this chamfering can be done now, it can be done at a later stage. Uh, it's not really that important, I prefer to do it before I go onto the rail. So just a few swipes just to give it a, a bit of a chamfer just to protect the, uh, just to protect the edge. Once the styles have been done, we then move on to the, uh, the rails and the uh, horizontal skekel and the horizontal kumiko. Now the uh, dimensions are different, the measurements are different, but the actual process is no different from what we followed with the, uh, with the styles. 